everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for Tea Time. We have a little bit of fireside this morning and that is it. That smokiness of the lap song. So good. So good, guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea or maybe a cup of coffee or as I always say, something a bit harder. Depends on what part of the planet you are on. Today is Monday. Happy Memorial Day, everyone. That's in the U.S., of course. So, We're going to be hanging out just for a little while today. I'm going to cut the day short, hang out with the family, maybe hit the beach. We're down here in South Florida, and it's probably about 90 degrees outside. It is crazy hot. Crazy. Anyways, today we're going to talk about life after Adobe cutting the cord. And I just want to ask for your help with this. And the reason being is I did the entire series, Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord, about a year and a half ago. When basically I, after about two decades of using Adobe software, I cut the cord. I deleted every single piece of Adobe software off every single computer and moved over to alternatives. And I didn't care what the alternatives were. I just tried out everything and I posted it to you guys. And we took this journey together. It went over really big and people absolutely loved it. There was a lot of folks out there that were like, you know, it really helped me a lot not have to spend this money continuously at nauseam when I could use something else that does the same thing or pretty damn close to the same thing. A lot of folks were paying 50 plus dollars like I was and getting not that much for that money. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year, well over $600 a year, and it just wasn't worth it for them. Now, I had to do that for multiple licenses for all of the computers, so it turned into more like thousands of dollars every year. And it's been very difficult to find one package that literally does all of it and does it well. But I have found some, and I think that uh, when I'm done talking to you guys about this, hopefully you will see where I'm coming from this, and you will check these out. As I always say, I am not going to tell you what to pick. I'm gonna tell you what I picked and I'm gonna give you the reason why I picked it. I want you to get online, download those trials, check them out and see what works for you. But we cut the cord. And that Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series, like I said, did fantastic. And now I wanna do a version two of it, all right? An update, a 2021 update to that series. I talked to you about it in the past and I'm kind of falling on this stumbling block whereas there's a lot of the same software out there that I've already covered and I don't want to rehash or reinvent the wheel so to speak. I know I'm going to have to go over all these again for you guys but what I want to do is I want to get your help to find out what are your alternatives. Now this video is specific to Photoshop. All right. Now, Photoshop is one that a lot of people use. Of course, there's a ton of other software that people use from Adobe. You have your Lightroom, your Illustrator, your Premiere, you know, all of the other After Effects and Audition and all the rest of this stuff. So there's a lot out there. But right now we're going to concentrate on Photoshop. And what are those alternatives that you use? Now, I'm going to give you a list of the ones that I have put out there in the past. And I'm sure there's going to be some new ones. And I ask that you guys in the comment area below put those options, the things that you think that are good, that I should review, that I should get a little bit down and dirty with and be able to test out in comparison to other alternatives that we're currently using. So before I get into this list, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded my ebook as of yet, go check it out over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, 10 tips at making tax sharp images. There's something for everyone. Doesn't matter if you're professional, a pro-am, or just simply an amateur, you're gonna gleam something from that ebook. And the price is, wait for it, free. (laughs) Free, that's it, all right? So once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, go pick up your copy. Also, if you haven't cleaned your sensors as of late, Go clean those damn sensors. It's important, guys. It's important. You don't want to, in post-production, go and take out all of the dirt and smudge and smears that's all over your sensors, especially if you're using a mirrorless camera. They get even more dirty. There's nothing blocking, let's say, that mirror. When you pop that lens off, everything just sucks in like a magnet. 
for the most part. So go take a look at Aurora Camera Care. I created about six, seven months ago. They're being sold worldwide, small mom and pops, Amazon, Amazon Prime, B&H Photo and Video. You can go to my website, jcristina.com. Once again, it is Aurora Camera Care. They're really, really spectacular, easy and safe. Anyways, guys, so this is the list that I have as of right now. This is the current list for Adobe Photoshop alternatives. We start out with Affinity Photo. That product I rated number one in my last video, let's say, a year plus ago when I went and did this Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series. So that is Affinity Photo. You can use it on Mac and Windows as well as even iPad. So it works out pretty good because you can cross-platform the product. Next comes Acorn. Acorn's very good. It is for Mac only. There's also Sketch. Sketch is for Mac only also. So if you have a Mac, then both of those work out pretty well. Then you have Pixelmator Pro. That is for Mac. Corel Paint Shop Pro. That's for Windows. Sumo Paint. That was an interesting one that you can find on web. So that is a free uh, software, but it is web-based only. You don't find it on PC, Linux, or Mac. Next, you have the GIMP. Now, GIMP is a really good free piece of Adobe Photoshop software, and you can find that cross-platform for free, and it is on Windows, Mac, as well as Linux, which is quite nice. Then you have PhotoP, which is also a web-based piece of software. Krita is another one that is for Windows, Mac, and Linux, which is nice. Then you have Paint.net, which is another web base, and Pixlr. So it's P-I-X-L-R, that is web base also. Then you have Photoscape X, that was Windows and Mac. And finally, you have Paint Tool Sci, or S. AI, and that is for Windows. So those are the ones that I came up with in the Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series, and I went through all of those, and I gave you an understanding of why I chose the one that I chose, and where the deficiencies were for each one of those, and where the positive things were also pricing and what platform they were for. So once again, in the comment area below this video, place your alternatives for Adobe Photoshop. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be for Mac. It could be for PC. It could just be for your iPad that you use all the time. Whatever it is, just state what the name of it is and what the platforms it is good for. So some of these are good for many, like GIMP, which is for Windows, Macs, and Linux, all three platforms. So once again, in the comment area below this video, put those alternatives and I will check them out. So I'm working on this now. It's probably gonna take a few weeks for me to complete it, but as soon as it's complete, once again, life after Adobe, cutting the cord, the Adobe Photoshop alternative release will be coming out where I go over all of these packages where some of them got a little bit worse, some of them got better, some of them moved up the list, some of them moved down, and I'm going to tell you all about it soon. So once again, add yours to the mix. Anyways, guys, once again, happy Memorial Day to each and every one of you. If you have not subscribed to the channel and maybe you want to hear some more about this life after Adobe cutting the cord stuff, do so. Subscribe and then also click this little bell icon right over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want to contribute to the channel, click this little button down here. You can become a member. You give the channel a dollar or two or whatever per month, and I can give you perks for doing so. Also, if you like this video or any of the other 550 videos that I have on the channel, throw this video a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. And when we're done talking down here in the comment area, head over to our creative Discord server. You can find it over at community.jcristina.com. Once again, community.jcristina.com. And finally, head over to my website, jcristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be fantastic. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.